This video tutorial is all about the applications of DNA sequencing. Scientists predicted that the human genome would contain about 100,000 genes. In 1990, the Human Genome Project was launched and the genome was sequenced by 2003. Scientists were surprised to learn that the human genome contained only 24,000 genes, not many more than those of the mouse. Whole genome sequencing determines the complete DNA sequence of an organism's genome. In the case of eukaryotic cells, that is the genetic material of the chromosomes, mitochondria, and if you're looking at plants or algae, also of the chloroplasts. Sequenced genomes are stored in genetic banks. When the human genome was compared with those of other species, it became clear that few human genes are unique to us. Most of our genes have counterparts in other organisms. We share over 99% of our genes with chimpanzees. This verifies that genes that work well tend to be conserved by evolution. For example, pigs and humans have similar genes for insulin which is why prior to genetic modification of bacteria to make insulin, pig insulin was used to treat patients with diabetes. Sometimes, as evolution progresses, some genes are co-opted to perform new functions. Tiny changes to a gene in humans called FOXP2, which is also found in other mammals, including mice and chimpanzees, means that in humans, this gene allows speech. Many of the differences between organisms are not because the organisms have totally different genes, but because some of their shared genes have been altered and now work in subtly different ways. Some changes to the regulatory regions of DNA that do not code directly for proteins have also altered the expression of the genomes. Regulatory and coding genes interact in such ways that increase the number of genes and the number of proteins, um, sorry, increase the number of proteins without increasing the number of genes. Comparing genomes of organisms thought to be closely related has helped confirm the evolutionary relationships or has led to new knowledge about the relationships and in some cases, to certain organisms being reclassified. The DNA from bones and teeth of some extinct animals can be amplified and sequenced so that the animal's evolutionary history can be verified. Recently, samples of the extinct cave bear genomes were sequenced using high throughput techniques and the sequenced data obtained was compared to those of dogs. Dogs and bears diverged around 50 million years ago and share about 92% of their genome. All humans are genetically similar, except for rare cases where a gene has been lost by deletion of part of a chromosome. We all have the same genes, but we have different alleles. About 0.1% of our DNA is not shared with others. Now this sounds very small, but given that our genome domes contain three billion DNA base pairs, this means that there are three million places on the DNA lengths where our DNA sequences can differ due to random mutations such as substitutions. The places on the DNA where these substitutions occur are called single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, pronounced SNPs. Some have no effect on the protein. Some can alter a protein or alter the way a piece of RNA regulates the expression of another gene. Methylation of certain chemical groups in DNA plays a major role in regulating gene expression in eukaryotic cells. Methods to map this methylation of whole human genomes can help researchers to understand the development of certain diseases. 
for example, certain types of cancer and why they may or may not develop in genetically similar individuals. The study of this aspect of genetics is called epigenetics. Determining the sequence of amino acids within a protein is laborious and time consuming. However, if researchers have the organism's genome sequenced and know which genes code for a specific protein, by using knowledge of which base triplets code for which amino acids, they can determine the primary structure of proteins. The researchers need to know which part of the gene codes for exons and which codes for introns. Synthetic biology is an interdisciplinary science concerned with the designing and building of useful biological devices and systems. It encompasses biotechnology, evolutionary biology, molecular biology, systems biology, and biophysics, to name but a few. Its ultimate goals may be to build engineered biological systems that store and process information, as well as provide food, maintain human health, and enhance the environment. The sequences of DNA found by analyzing genomes provide potential building blocks for synthetic biologists to build devices. Now I'm gonna run through a few examples of synthetic biology applications. Firstly, information storage. Scientists can encode vast amounts of digital information onto a single strand of synthetic DNA. One project has encoded the complete works of William Shakespeare onto a strand of synthetic DNA. Another example of synthetic biology applications is the production of medicines. E. coli and yeast have both been genetically engineered to produce the precursor of a good anti-malarial drug. Previously, this was only available by extracting it from certain plants at particular times in the plant's life cycle. Another example of synthetic biology applications is novel proteins. Designed proteins have been produced, for example, one that is similar to haemoglobin and binds to oxygen but not to carbon monoxide. We also have biosensors. So modified bioluminescent bacteria placed on a coating of a microchip glow if air is polluted with petroleum pollutants. And finally, nanotechnology. Material can be produced by nanotechnology for functions such as adhesion. Synthetic biology raises issues of ethics and biosecurity. Extensive regulations are already in place due to 30 to 40 years of using genetically modified organisms. There are many advisory panels and many scientific papers that have been written on how to manage the risks. Synthetic biology is not about making synthetic life forms from scratch, but it's about a potential for new systems with rewards and associated risks being managed.